Hey guys, what's up? So one of the things with Flask is um, you really need a, a database abstraction layer, something that allows you to manage your database much easier. And those are typically done using something called an object relational mapper. And it's something that Django has built into it and it's really helpful, especially for noobs that aren't very good when it comes to database manipulation, like creating tables, um, setting things like to auto increment. Uh, being able to query those things in a way that makes sense without slamming your, your database. So for that reason, a lot of people use these ORMs and um, the, refer the preferred one from what I've seen in the Flask community is uh, SQL Alchemy. So Flask has a Flask SQL Alchemy project that we, we're going to be looking to install in this, um, in this application. I plan on using Postgres um, with our uh with our new application here so i have postgres installed and this uh pg admin 3 is like the php my admin of mysql um, it's postgres's gui uh, to make things a lot easier to deal with and uh, i have a video already on my channel and it's titled uh, installing postgres for windows and in there it shows you how to actually install it so you can have this tool but um i mean whenever you go into production it's probably best just to kind of get that out of the way now i mean don't start with sql because it, it might be easier to use something like um like sqlite which comes with python but sqlite isn't really going to be your answer in production so it's best to just take that that plunge now and try to get involved in a production type of database uh, postgres is very impop is very popular in the uh, django community these days you can also use mysql personally i'm just going to use postgres for this though um there's been a major push, I think, in the Python community to continue to, to, to gravitate towards you know, Postgres. Um, so it has a lot of really good JSON support coming down the line. And uh, just it seems like a really good option. So that's why I'm using it. But uh, you don't necessarily have to. But Flask uh, SQL Alchemy is just going to be um, how we inter interface to our database. Whether you choose Postgres or MySQL is going to be up to you. All right, so that being said, we need to go ahead and install it. So let's go back to our command line, and we're going to run. Let's kill the server by pressing Control-C, and we're going to run pip install flask SQL alchemy. All right, so that installed okay, that's good. Now, let's go ahead and see if we can import it into the project that we just created, this simple little project. Underneath the Flask import statement, let's go ahead and say from Flask SQL Alchemy, import SQL Alchemy. And now we need to create our database object. So we're gonna say DB equals, and then we're gonna use SQL Alchemy that we just imported. And then under the um, app.run command. And what we actually want to do is we want to pass the app as an argument. So DB needs to be defined after app. And here we're just going to pass in app. Now one of the next step that you're going to have to do is going to be specific to your setup to your database. But let's go ahead and um, I'm going to copy in this code so I don't make any mistakes. And what we're going to be doing is setting up the config. So we have the SQL Alchemy database URI, which is just uh, a key value that we're setting. And each database has a different config string. So the Postgres one that I'm going to be using is going to look like this. Now. This is going to be the name of your database, and then you want to have your actual root user, whoever you decided that to be. So when you installed Postgres, you actually created a user, which you have to log into every time you want to gain access to the server. So if I maximize this and I double click, then it's going to ask you for the uh, the actual password. Now, if you notice, uh, my username is Postgres here, so that's what I decided to make the 
the main user. And I already have a few databases in here. So we're going to go ahead and create a database by saying new database. And then we'll name it Flask Movie. All right, so now Flask Movie is created. So if I went in here, we don't have any schemas or anything. It's all just uh, empty. There's no tables inside of it. But at least we have a database now set up in Postgres. So I would actually want to change this to the name of my user, which, like I said, is Postgres. And then this would be my password. And then localhost is fine because that's where it's currently deployed. And then we just give the name of the database. So for demonstration purposes, since this is just a locally running database that I don't care about, I've actually changed my password to test123, so that way you guys can see everything that I'm doing. And if I type in test123 here, um, it all works. So this should work and connect to our Postgres just fine and to the newly created database that we had um, just created using our PG admin tool. All right, so now that we've done that, let's go ahead and create our database table or our schema. And we do that by, by creating a class, and we call the class whatever we want our table name to be. So I'm going to use the documentation from online so that way I don't mess this up. But we're going to have a user table, which you know, we definitely want a user, you know, so we have users to our site and blah, blah, blah. So we definitely want to have that. And you can see that um, we create an ID and we give it a DB column. It's an integer. We set a primary key, and that should auto-increment. Uh, for every new user that's added, the ID will add one to itself, so that way it's always unique. And um, primary key is always considered, you know, it's always going to be unique, so you don't have to specify that it, you know, is unique like we do down here. Now, we obviously want usernames to be unique. We don't need multiples of those. And then we would want emails to be unique as well. That way you don't have, you know, the same jackass registering to your site a hundred times to try to, you know, manipulate your data. So this is all specific to SQL Alchemy and how this works. So we're just going to go ahead and um, run our code here. And in order for this database table to actually be created, what we're going to do is go back to our command line and let's run the Python interpreter. And what we need to do is say from and then the name of our application, which is called Flask Movie. We're going to say import DB. It is Flask Movie, right? Or no, it's from App. I'm sorry. It's from App. All right, now this is just giving us some sort of uh, overhead warning. We don't care about that for right now, so just disregard that. But you can see the name of our app is App because that's what we named it under. The folder is just Flask Movie. So now we just need to say db.createAll. Okay, it looks like it's actually missing the Python, the Python library tool that we actually need in order for this to work. So let me see. So if you're using Windows like I am, what we need to do is we need to find the PSY, whatever the crap that thing's called. And you need to go to this URL right here, which is a EDU site that actually it's PSY copg all right so there it is and i'm using python 3.5 so you would actually want um whether whether you're using the 32-bit version or the 64 i'm actually using the 32 so you can see i've already downloaded it what i'm going to do is copy this wheel file and then we need to put it into the name of our file so flask movie go to the virtual environment go to lib site packages and then we're going to paste it inside of there and now I want to CD into that drive so go into site packages and now I should just be able to say pip install and then the long name that is copg2-2.6 1 6.1 cp35 none 
win32.whl for wheel. In case you've never used a pip uh, wheel file, wheel is just the alternate version and, and how these packages are contained, but you can still use pip to install them, so you just need to go wherever you have the wheel file located in your directory and run that. All right, so let's go back and try to do that again. So DB create all. All right, so that's cool. So that should work. And let's go into our PG admin here and take a look at our Flask movie database. Go into schemas. Go into public, go under tables. You can see before we had zero. Now we have this new user table that we just defined. And if we go in there, um, you can see that has, uh, see, there's three columns. So we have ID, username, and email. Those are the three columns that we just created right there. If I wanted to add, I could go ahead and just say, like, uh, insert. I could do that here, but we're actually not going to do that right now in this video. So this video was simply just how we get our database Flask SQL Alchemy set up with, uh, with, with Python 35, Flask, and everything else that we're doing in this tutorial. All right, guys. Thanks for watching. Bye.